Hi everybody. Today I'd like to share with you my passion regarding the origins of a Christian and very early Christian Bible. We all know the, the Christianity um, began thousands of years ago with the birth of Jesus and this is a very rare 1828 Bible and every single page in this book is highly illustrated. You can see um, every single page is like this. So I actually read many, many stories from the Bible. But what, what's arisen for me over the decades of research is that I found another Bible that claims to have been sitting in an urn in Tibet for 2,000 years. And it's actually this Bible here. It's called the, the Gospel of the Holy Twelve. So this was sitting in an urn for 2,000 years and it was translated by... Um, from the Aramaic by Swedenborg, and Swedenborg was a great scholar like Rudolf Steiner, and it was edited by Uzeli. So Reverend Gideon Uzeli was an American preacher who um, started investigating this very old scroll. He actually went to Tibet um, to, to see the Lamas, and he, they wanted to get to the source of the origin of this Bible. But before Uzeli, who was around 1835 to 1906, we, we had a very mysterious... Um, um, we had a very mysterious scholar. Many other scholars had heard rumours of this book. And the reason why this book is so controversial is that it, what the Lord's Prayer begins with our father, mother. And I'm going to read that out in a while. So, um, so the, the, um, the Gospel of the Holy Twelve, also known as the Gospel of the Perfect Life, talked about father, mother, Abba, Amma, that God was not a he, but God was the creator of all gender. And they talked about um, um, being vegetarian and um, living a good life. So I just wanted to um, give some examples of this um, story. So um, what, what happened was, um, th how this got translated was that um, in the 1870s, there was a, f San, from the San Franciscan order, St. Francis of Assisi, there was a, a friar called Placidus. And he goes to this monastery in Tibet and he takes it to... Um, he brings back the manuscripts and they translate it. Then they take it to Rome, to the Vatican, but the Vatican decided to suppress this book. So th this is a very controversial issue because we want to know what the truth is of the origins of these books that have been translated in many, many different ways from the Greek and the Latin. So I decided to take this book and rewrite it. Um, so I took all the um, stories as it was and... Um, decided just to write it in clear text. So I've got some stories to read from here. Um, yeah, so the, the reason why I love this story is that the original prayer, um, which I'll read, goes, Our Father, Mother, who art above and within, hallowed be thy sacred name in twofold trinity. So when you hear this thing, what's a twofold trinity, the, um, w we're looking at um, three parts. There's a small section a large section and the whole. So you can see here that when you get these golden ratio calipers that have three legs that express the trinity, you can see that the large part to the small part is the same as the large to the whole. So that's um, in the Lord's Prayer, this reference to the Holy Trinity in two parts. Um, okay, so I'm going to read you the first section here. Um, I'll just put these glasses on. So, so this is the first bit. Um, so, um, so Jesus is praying in a certain place on a mountaintop and the disciples come and he's saying, um, when we close the door, pray to Abba Amma who is above and within thee and thy father, mother knowest all thy secrets. So it starts off, our father, mother who art above and within, hallowed be thy sacred name in twofold trinity. In wisdom, love, and equity, thy kingdom come to all. Thy will be done as in heaven, so on earth. Give us day by day to partake of thy holy bread and the fruit of the living vine. As thou dost forgive us our trespasses, so may we forgive others who trespass against us. Show upon us thy goodness that to others we may, we may show the same. In the hour of temptation, deliver us from evil. So that's the perhaps the most famous of all parables is learning how to pray and also um as we know from the christian iconography the most popular symbols is the dove so i have this dove appearing in the presence of jesus's field and we also have the lamb um 
there's many interpretations as to what the lamb dove symbolizes, but it also has that um, auric cross in in the field to show that it's an enlightened, it has um, a high, it's a high, connected to a high source, and it's carrying this cross. So the cross, I believe, also is a connection between the material and the spiritual. So, and, and there's cryptic Greek writing called the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. So, I, I love all the um, symbolism that's in the Christian Bible. Um, there's different stories about the prodigal son. We all know about the prodigal son. Um, but that's one of my favorite stories. I won't read that out. I'm going to read that out in another Bible called the, the Aquarian Gospel. But um, the, another favorite one that I have, another story... Um, is I'm, I'm very interested in what we call magic squares. There's, a, there's a, um, a parable of the divine kingdom. So we can see here that, the, so we got Jesus here and he gathers seven, um, he gathers into a field where there's seven palm trees and he gets all his disciples and he says, I, I'm going to give each one of you a number, but they don't know what their number is. And um, he says, I want you to stand over here and you move here. And suddenly he's made a magic square. So one of the parables called the parable of the seven palms in section 54 is a reference to as above, so below the divine kingdom. So we're going to hear about some numbers. So just so you know what the numbers are, that they're a representation of these seven by seven is 49, 49 numbers. And they all add up to uh, 175. And the pattern that it makes is this beautiful mandala when you join one to two to three. When we find order amidst the chaos, we find these exquisite patterns. So I'm just going to read a little bit from that, that story. Um, so that, this one's called Lection 54 or Section 54. Um, and it goes like this. Um, so what I just explained is this is how it's written in the Bible. And Jesus, when he came to a certain place where seven palm trees grew, gathered his disciples around him, and to each he gave a number and a name, which he only knew who received it. And he said unto them, Stand ye as pillars in the house of God, and show forth the order according to your numbers which ye have received. And they stood around him, and they made a body, four square, and they counted the number and could not. And they said unto him, Lord, we cannot. And Jesus said, let him who is greatest among you be even as the least. And the symbol of that which is the first be as the symbol of that which is the last. And they did so in every way there was equality. And yet each bore a different number. And the one side was as the other and the upper was as the lower and the inner as the outer. And the Lord said, it is enough. Such is the house of the master builder. Four square it is, perfect. Many are the chambers, but the house is one. So you can see that when we're talking about, like, say, magic squares, Jesus is referring to um, a divine kingdom where what's at the top is the same as the bottom, what's to the left is the same as the right. And if we took one number out of a magic square, the whole thing um, becomes incoherent. So um, I, this, this was actually my journey um, into studying sacred geometry, like from a Christian text, I started learning about magic squares and, and, and how deep the symbolism was. And the story of how I first came across this Gospel of the Holy Twelve, which introduced me to sacred geometry, as above, so below. I was, at, I was in a bookstore in the Adjar. In Sydney, there's an esoteric bookstore called the Adjar Bookstore. And normally I'm studying looking at Buddhism or Indian or Pythagoras, I'm in different sections, but for some reason I was drawn to go to a Christian section and there happened um, to be a book like that and it was just, it was almost ready to fall and I remember I went to get it, but instead I was going to tap it in. But when I jumped up and picked it up, the book came into my hand and it was this book and I'm just literally showing you how old this book is, but... um. So that's kind of the guidance that we're kind of given in our life is that Christianity, this connection to source, these are, these are the questions we need to ask is what is the true nature of this um, creation? Like, and the stories that have been transmitted to us from Jesus and Buddha and Krishna, um, is, it's our duty to research and to find the common thread that connects all these master teachings. Um, and I believe ultimately all the knowledge is in ourselves. So sacred geometry is about remembering who we are and embracing 
the collective religions because really we're all one, like the magic square, we're as above, so below. Thank you.